Hello there, welcome to NHK Newsline. It is Friday, April 15th, 10 a.m. in Japan. Tens of thousands of people in southwestern Japan have fled their homes after a powerful earthquake. At least nine people have been confirmed dead. More than 950 others are injured, and the aftershocks continue. The magnitude 6.5 quake hit Kumamoto Prefecture Thursday night. Officials say more than 44,000 people have fled since. Many stayed outside overnight in the town of Mushki, where the hardest jolt was recorded. As the dawn broke, the damage was evident. This is a famous landmark and cultural asset, the Kumamoto Castle. The jolt was so powerful. I still can't believe that happened to me. About 14,000 houses are without electricity. Some 1,900 houses are without water. Gas supply has been shut off for safety reasons. Shinkansen bullet train service has been suspended after the quake derailed one of the trains. Since it was on its way to the garage, there were no passengers on board and no one was hurt. Flights have been disrupted at Kumamoto Airport. The quake struck the region where Japan's only online nuclear plant is located. Officials say there are no irregularities with the two reactors at the Sendai plant and they remain in operation. The quake happened in the Futagawa Hinagu fault zone. Experts believe the fault lines slipped sideways causing the strong tremor at Mushki town. More than 120 aftershocks have been felt in the region. Experts at Japan's meteorological agency are telling people in severely hit areas to brace themselves for further tremors. The possibility of large tremors with intensities of up to six minus on the Japanese scale will remain for about a week. So please be prepared. As we mentioned, Mashiki town was hardest hit by the quake. A reporter from NHK's domestic news service explains the situation there. I'm standing in front of a Shinto shrine in the Soryo district of Mashiki town. A shrine gate made of stone has completely collapsed along with many lanterns. The stone fence running alongside the road has fallen over hindering the passage of pedestrians. As the day begins, more vehicles can be seen on the roads. But the signal lights at this intersection are without power, so police officers are directing traffic. The roadway has visible cracks, and water is leaking onto the surface. Firefighters are patrolling the area, visiting houses one by one to check if the residents are safe. Some evacuees who took shelter last night can be seen walking back to their homes to check on the condition. Here are more pictures coming out of the region. An NHK camera captured the moment the quake struck Kumamoto at around 9.30 p.m. Thursday. The tremor caused nearly half of the wall of Kumamoto Castle to collapse. And here's what it was like inside NHK's newsroom near the castle. Hundreds were admitted to hospitals or have received treatment. I was watching TV in my apartment on the eighth floor. The building shook a lot. Then the lights went out and my wardrobe fell onto me. Several fires broke out in the town of Mushki where the shaking was most severe. Aftershocks have been rocking the area. Some are nearly as powerful as the first earthquake. The jolt was a great shock. My body was thrown back and forth continuously. The main highway cracked and crumbled in many areas. Some sections are closed. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe spoke to the media on Friday morning. He stressed that he'll take measures to rescue victims and ensure the safety of all citizens in disaster hit areas. I will do my best to provide food, medical supplies and support for those who are suffering from the earthquake. 
I will also make efforts as soon as possible to secure housing for those who have lost their homes. Japan's chief cabinet secretary Yoshihide Suga briefed reporters. The government has set up a task force at the prime minister's office and an emergency team of senior government officials. We will do our best to get detailed information on the earthquake damage now that daylight has revealed what we could not see during the night. Suga said several thousand rescue team members from the self-defense forces, police and fire departments across the country have been sent to disaster hit areas. When the fish all die and the lakes catch fire, will it be worth it then? And when the cancer rates 90% or high, will it be worth it then? When the whole world's a war over water and oil, no more fighting cause there's no more spoils will it be worth it then if not if not what will it take to make you change your mind what kind of sign could convince you that people are worth more than you and
Deixa os olhos 